BTEC Applied Science, the first 20 elements. If you're doing BTEC Applied Science, or in fact for A-level physics, or for GCSE chemistry, this is really, really useful stuff. This is something that I learned when I was 14 or 15, I think. And it is one of the most useful things I've learned is to just be able to write down the first 20 elements. If you look at a periodic table, like on webelements.com, which is a fantastic interactive periodic table, uh, it looks incredibly complicated. There's so many elements there. There's so much information there. You know, if you look at that for the first time, if you don't understand what's going on, it's very, very daunting. The good news is we don't need all of that. All we really need for 90% for of what we need to know, 90% of what we need to know is just the first 20 elements. If you learn the first 20 elements and whereabouts they are in the periodic table, so much stuff you can just figure out, as I hope to show you in this video. Okay, so there you go. Um, the first 20 elements, group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, they're the different groups. Uh, hydrogen, I draw it on its own. It's a bit strange, hydrogen. It's not a metal. So, I mean, officially it is group one, but it's not a group one metal. So it's a bit odd on its own hydrogen. Uh, periods one, two, three, and four. Yeah, potassium and calcium are group four. Sorry, period four. Uh, periods two and three. We do comparisons between periods two and three on the applied science course. And as I said, this is worth learning. Uh, my challenge, Dave's challenge, learn it, as in be able to write it out. Start with a blank piece of paper and be able to write that out. How do you learn it the way that I learnt it? Uh, Harry Henry, that, that's Harry Henry there. Harry Henry likes beer by cupfuls, not overflowing. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you the rest, you can make it up yourself or look it up whatever because it gets a bit rude that's a, a a tip for learning things by the way if you make it rude it's easier to remember i mean it offends me i'm offended but there you go hairy henry likes beer by cupfuls not overflowing nelly do, 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 do. right so learn the first 20 elements be able to write them out be able to write that out Okay, here's the first thing, metals and non-metals. Metals on the left, non-metals on the right, uh, apart from hydrogen, because he's a bit odd. Uh, and then there's a couple that we're not sure if they're metals or non-metals. They are semi-metals, semi-metallic, boron and silicon. Apart from them, metals on the left, non-metals on the right. About three quarters of elements are metals. The non-metals just tend to be that top right-hand corner, the non-metals, apart from hydrogen. How many electrons do they have? This is very, very useful. If you can write out the first 20 elements, how many electrons does each element have? Well, starting with hydrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. <coughs> How many electrons does a neon atom have? 10. How many electrons does an aluminium atom have? 13. How many electrons does a calcium atom have? 20. You can figure out how many electrons they have, which is very useful. On a periodic table next to the element, there's a big number and a small number. Uh, sometimes the big number's on top, sometimes it's on the bottom. Basically, the big number is the relative atomic mass and the small number is called the atomic number or the proton number. Uh, 
number of protons. If it's a neutral atom, then it's also the number of electrons. So the small number on the periodic table is the atomic number and it's the number of electrons or the number of protons in the nucleus. Okay, let's look at a couple of groups. Uh, just a couple of groups, I won't do them all. Group one, again, ignoring hydrogen, group one, they are the group one metals or the alkali metals. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Um, they are called the alkali metals. If you put them in water, they react with water. They give off hydrogen and you end up with an alkali. Uh, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. Uh, so they're called the alkali metals. Um, one interesting thing about them is uh, if you look at this, this is called the electron configuration. Uh, and the, the interesting thing here is that they have one electron in their outer shell. Okay, one electron, there you go, 2s1, 3s1, 4s1. They have one electron in their outer shell. As you go down, they get more reactive. Okay, for reasons discussed in another video. The group one metals. Here, group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Group seven are called the halogens. Uh, and they are reactive non-metals, okay, group seven. Uh, and if we look, they have, um, let's change this to a pen. They have got one electron missing, if you like, in their outer shell, or at least they've got room for one more electron in their outer shell. They would uh, like to get hold of another electron. Okay, so look at this, 2s2, 2p5, it, it wants another electron. Okay, here, 3s2, 3p5, it wants another electron. Okay, group seven, the halogens, they are reactive non-metals. Ionization states. Now, ionization states are, if an element forms an ionic compound, then how many electrons does it gain or lose? Or if it's a covalent compound, then how many of its electrons are involved in bonding? Okay, now ionic compounds, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, they, they would really want to get rid of an electron. So if they get rid of an electron, then you're gonna end up with Li plus. Okay, a lithium ion is Li plus, and that is called its ionization state. Its ionization state is plus one. Uh, group two, it's plus two. Group three, it's plus three or three plus. These guys here don't, don't commonly form ionic compounds, but if they're involved in bonding, this is how many electrons. For example, carbon uh, in something like CH4. CH4, one carbon atom, four hydrogens. There's four electrons in its outer shell, four electrons involved in bonding. Uh, and I'm not gonna draw a dot cross diagram. You should be able to do that. Uh, these guys here, they do form organic compounds or co covalent compounds. Uh, and if it's ionic, I mean, fluorine, chlorine, they gain one electron or if it's in an, a, a covalent bond, that's how many electrons are involved in bonding, just one electron. Uh, with oxygen and sulfur, it's two electrons. Uh, these guys here, group zero, they couldn't be bothered. They've got a full set of electrons. They're not particularly in, bothered about forming any compounds, the inert gases, the noble gases. If you know the ionization state, you can figure out the formula for the compound. For example, uh, lithium oxide. Now, lithium oxide, lithium is Li plus, uh, oxygen is two minus. So what will the formula for lithium oxide be? 
Well, you're going to want two lithiums for every oxygen, aren't you? Because the lithiums lose one electron, the oxygens want to gain two. So the formula for lithium oxide is Li2O. Li2O. Similarly, magnesium oxide, well, magnesium is Mg2+, plus, oxygen is O2-. Minus. Ooh, that, that sounds like a happy couple to me. That sounds like MgO. One magnesium loses two electrons, one oxygen gains two electrons, MgO. You can figure out the formula for different compounds and you can do it for the uh, covalent compounds as well. So oxidation states. Okay, I've just said that. Uh, so I could waffle on, I could say a lot more about other trends in the periodic table and explaining the trends as well, but I do that in other videos. The point I am making in this video is that learning the first 20 elements, being able to write that out, is a jolly useful thing to be able to do. You can figure out an awful lot, okay, logically, just figure things out. It's a little bit like moving to a new city, to a new town. When you first arrive there, you haven't got a clue where you are. Uh, gradually, uh, if you learn this, you learn this, you learn this, you can figure out how to get from A to B pretty quickly. And it's a, another jolly useful thing to learn.